One herb with this fancy name has been shown to be effective against Bartonella, Borrelia, and Babesia. As a patient who's been disabled for over three years now, I know that there is no one size fits all when it comes to treatment. So in this video, we'll go over how this herb might be able to be used for healing and its potential toxicities, and you will get to see my Halloween costume. Happy Halloween, Bartonella buddies. In case you couldn't tell, I'm Bartonella Bane. It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. For treating fucking Bartonella. <laughs> Should I do the entire video in the Bane voice? <laughs> it would be extremely painful for you. Don't worry, I can hear you on the other side of the screen yelling no, so I won't do that. I'm also not gonna do the whole video in this mask or the bald cap. And now I'm Bartonella Bass Fisher. <laughs> Over the past few years, researchers at Johns Hopkins have been testing various drugs, essential oils, and herbs to see their in vitro efficacy against Borrelia, Bartonella, and Babesia, which I'm gonna call the three Bs. Not to be confused with my favorite three Bs, Boots, Booze, and Boys, which I haven't had since I've gotten sick. And one of the herbal compounds found to be effective against all three Bs was Cryptolopis sanguinolenta. And I'm, I don't know how to say that correctly, and I hope I am, but I'm about to say it like a lot in this video. So this plant is used in Ghana to treat uncomplicated malaria, and we do have studies showing that it is effective. So one study treated 44 patients with uncomplicated malaria with Cryptolopis sanguinolenta, and they found that it was effective at reducing symptoms like fevers and clearing the parasite that causes malaria from the blood. Patients in this study drank a tea bag with two and a half grams in the tea bag three times a day. So we have some evidence that Cryptolopis sanguinolenta is effective at treating malaria in humans, but as far as the three Bs go, we only have in vitro studies. Cryptolopis sanguinolenta has been shown to have good activity in both logarithmic phase colonies and stationary phase colonies of Borrelia burgdorferi. Logarithmic phase refers to a colony of bacteria that is growing rapidly, while stationary phase refers to a colony in which the bacterial cell count stays stable because the number of bacteria dying e is equal to the number of bacteria being born. In the logarithmic phase, Cryptolopis sanguinolenta could inhibit bacterial growth at a fairly low concentration. The authors showed that it could completely eradicate all cells at a concentration of 1%, while doxycycline, cefirozine, and all other herbs that they tested were not able to do this. In the study on Bartonella, they tested three different alcohol extracts of Cryptolopis sanguinolenta, so 30, 60, and 90%, against both logarithmic and stationary phase colonies. All three extracts against log phase Bartonella were effective at low concentrations. This is really encouraging, but it's important to note that all of these studies were only done in vitro and we really don't know how this is gonna play out in a mouse or human model. And this is especially relevant in the case of stealth infections like Bartonella because Bartonella can evade the host's immune system. One of the ways by which it does this is by hiding in our own cells. Basically, the Bartonella are like, do you feel in charge? And you're like, no, no, no I don't. The researchers also found that the 60% alcohol extract of Cryptolopis sanguinolenta could eradicate all cells in the culture by day five, which is the same time that it took Rifampin to do the same thing, while the 30% and 90% alcohol extracts took seven days to achieve this. And then in the Babesia study, they found that Cryptolopis sanguinolenta was effective against Babesia duncani in a model using the red blood cells of hamsters. Side note, I once had two hamsters and the misinformed guy at Petco told us they could live in the same cage. And when we came home, Squeaky had taken a tiny chunk out of Squiggles's ear and side. Squeaky wasn't very nice. When Squiggles died first, we buried him in the backyard. And when Squeaky died, we put him in the trash can. Okay, so back to the study. <laughs> So they found that the higher concentrations of the alcohol extract of Cryptolopis sanguinolenta, so the 60 and 90%, were more effective than the 30%. But it's important to note that it isn't always the case that the higher the alcohol extract means that it's more effective. We need more research into which formulations of which herb works best for which pathogen. So not only was the full herb effective, but they also found that the active ingredient, which is called cryptolipine, was effective as well. 
So then the question becomes how safe and how bioavailable is this herb? One of my BLMDs mentioned in a webinar that he uses this herb but only in short cycles because of its toxicities. And I'll put a link to the webinar in the video description box below. He doesn't tell us in that webinar what the toxicities are, so I have done that for you today. So many animal studies have shown that Cryptolopus sanguinolenta reduces fertility, and this is in a dose-dependent manner, meaning higher doses are more harmful. Oh yes, I was wondering what would break first. Your spirit or your body, said the Bartonella. You want to know the real reason that Bane wears the mask? It's because he is embarrassed that he likes to wear NARS uh, lip balm in the shade Laguna. And you know what? Bane should just be secure in his masculinity. It's 2021. Specifically, it has been shown to inhibit ovulation in rabbits, and in mice, it has been shown to inhibit the growth of the uterus in pregnant mice. It has been shown to reduce sperm count. It can terminate pregnancies, and it delays development in postnatal or baby mice that have been exposed to the drug while um, in the bell bell. The uterus. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. So these studies provide pretty sound evidence that Cryptolopus sanguinolenta should not be used in pregnant people or in anyone trying to conceive. What I find more than a little worrisome about this fact is that when I was looking at websites that sell this herb, there is no mention of this possibility. Under contraindications, it literally says none. I think that's pretty, I, th I think it's really irresponsible. I might even email these places. I'll let you know if I do. I actually emailed a few places and I attached relevant literature and Woodland Essence got back to me promptly and added pregnancy as a contraindication, but no one else saw fit to email me back. I feel really good that I was able to impact at least one real t retailer, but there are so, so many retailers. It just shows you that we have to look out for ourselves as patients with any therapy, whether that be er herbal or pharmaceutical exhausting i know oh and after i recorded that sage women herbs got back to me and they added uh pregnancy as a contraindication yay so as far as other toxicities go one rodent study showed that it could increase the risk of gastric ulceration by increasing gastric acid secretion through a histamine related pathway but the same study showed that these mice uh, had weight gain and it increased the rodent's appetite. These effects are most likely dose dependent and we need more studies to fully understand this risk. Another study showed that Cryptolopus sanguinolenta that was given to mice for two weeks, the mice showed evidence of cell death and tissue necrosis, which is death, um, tissue death in their kidneys. And these effects were more severe at higher doses. So there isn't a lot of research on how the full herb is absorbed, but we do know from studies on cryptolipine, which is the active ingredient, that it has low bioavailability orally. So that means a low fraction of what is ingested actually reaches the bloodstream. However, cryptolipine penetrates tissues well, and it may accumulate in organs such as the spleen, liver, and heart. And then it may slowly leave those tissues, which would extend the amount of time that the compound is in the plasma. And according to these scientists, this might be good for clearing the malaria parasite from red blood cells. And just some Bartonella babe speculation here, or should I say, Bartonella babe speculation. Knowing that both Bartonella and Babesia both infect red blood cells just like the malaria parasite, I could see this property being effective for those two bees as well. And I won't go too in depth here, but there is some research supporting that this herb has antifungal, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, pain relieving, and some other effects. Also, one study found that it had both sedative and pro-anxiety effects, and usually those two things don't go together, but the authors reasoned that it could be due to different main active ingredients exerting those two different effects. It was also done on mice, so who really knows how this applies to humans? So how does all of this apply to patients taking Cryptolopus sanguinolenta for any of the three Bs? Well, I'm not a doctor, so I can't advise you on that. But the study done on patients with malaria, given the tea bag formulation three times a day, they were given that uh, for five days and they didn't show any lab abnormalities that suggested toxicity, but that's obviously not a very long time. 
There are other studies on animals, but the herb is processed in such different ways that I personally am not equipped to figure out how much of the herb those animals received and how that applies to humans. What I will say in that all of these animal studies, the animals received the drug for 14 days max, which obviously is not a long time, especially when we're dealing with chronic infection. So as always, ask your doctor, but they probably won't know either, honestly. Calm down, doctor. Now is not the time for fear. That comes later. My name is Jake and I really want to make helping people navigate their chronic health journey my job through making these edutainment videos and my research and there are a few ways that you can help me do that. The first way is you can donate through PayPal or Venmo if you are in a position to do so and the links to that will be in the video description box below. You can also shop my Bartonella Babe merch. 25% goes to the Bartonella Project at North Carolina State University. And I also sell my Etsy jewelry and all the links will be in the video description box below. Another herb that has been shown to be effective against all three bees is called Japanese knotweed. And I've done a video on that. So click right here to watch that video and my playlist on treatment. You do not want to have to say to the Bartonella, I broke you. How have you come back? Bubby Bane and I will see you over there. Happy Halloween! No animals were harmed in the making of this video. Oh, oh, kisses.